things got out of control and others have more power than you? Hi, I'm Deborah Kozowski, three-time best-selling author, speaker, executive coach, and the podcast host of The Millionaire Woman Show. Today, I want to talk to you about taking back control. You see, you only lose it when you allow it to be taken away. And first of all, I want to start off by talking to you about where you are putting your attention and focus. You really need to pay attention to where it's going. Are you caught up in negative news, in environment around you, the economy, dropping markets, or pandemic, feeling stuck versus safe? So all of these things are influencing your thoughts and they're changing the beliefs you have about what's possible for you in the world. And then what happens is we have the model by Dr. Martin Seligman called learned helplessness. People who fall into this are generally pessimistic, but what happens is, is this programming, because they've been so focused on social media, watching the news and seeing all the dire events going on, that there is a change in your brain that occurs for you to see the world from a different perspective. Your point of view has shifted, and therefore, the way you think is different, the way you feel about yourself and the possibilities is different, and the actions you take and the results that you're wanting have now shifted. And there might be some inaction. So Dr. Seligman talks about learned helplessness. This is when there's a belief that nothing you do is going to help and nothing is going to change. This is the way it's going to be. But often what happens where people feel that they've had a loss of control, they still have control over. So one of the things that he talks about is the three Ps. Pervasive, where someone believes that it is going to be an all or nothing thing. Everything is awful. They catastrophize things. And then we have personal, that they personalize it. That I am bad. I am no good. I am stupid. That personalization. And then they also have that permanence that nothing's gonna change, it's gonna stay like this forever. But we know that's not true. We know that all things in life that we go through, like seasons and cycles, are all temporary. And with that temporariness, we know that there's moments of happiness, there's moments of sadness, and life has different changes and curveballs that occur. So we know it's ever changing. So that it's a temporary measure. But the people who have developed a learned helplessness, They take things personally, they have that all or nothing pervasive thinking, and they believe things are permanent, that there's no opportunity to make change or that there's a shift. They see all hope is lost. Where a positive person, optimistic person, they can look at a situation and they see obstacles, they see roadblocks and say, you know what, I've got this. It's part of the process. Challenges will arise for me to move through and I will grow to be better because I will have been exposed to this experience. You know, people will often say, well, you know, that teacher didn't understand what I was going through or this doctor didn't know what he was doing or whatever they want to say about an individual and their skill set. But you have to remember a person is only as good at that skill set of what they've been exposed to and what they've experienced. So instead of placing judgment, also coming from a place of understanding of that exposure and experience. They may have the education, but some things we learn much better when we've been exposed to experiences and internalize some of that learning. So I want to encourage you to make a list. One, if you have something going on in your life where you feel that, you know what, I'm stuck. I don't know how to move through this. I feel that things are out of control and maybe all hope is lost and I do feel a bit helpless or powerless in this situation. I want you to make a list of all the things you feel you cannot control. And as you go through this list, look at it very carefully. Is it true that none of those things are within your control? Take a look at it and then push it aside. You acknowledged it. Then what I want you to do is make a list of all the things within your control. That includes managing yourself, being aware of your beliefs, 
your judgments, your conclusions that you're making, the challenges that you faced, what are the things that you have control over in this situation? And it's often yourself first, because we can control ourselves, and then what we can do about the situation at hand. That's when you re start to regain some power, right? You take back your control when you realize that you have a lot more control than you gave yourself credit for. The other thing is I want you to do some reflection when you think about the situation that you feel is kind of out of control or you feel powerless is in what ways am I enabling this situation to continue? In what ways can I do something differently that would provide different results? Because you know, Albert Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting the same results. Do you want to get the same results? Or do you want something different for yourself? And when you make that decision, you're going to be able to move forward more powerfully, strongly, because you are focused, your intention on what you're able to control. And it doesn't matter what the economy is. I know people who are doing very well because they're focusing on their personal economy of who they are, what they believe in, what they stand for, and they're moving forward. They are not saying, well, because of the, you know, recession or the pandemic or, you know, all of these ors, and they're not allowing negative news to tell them that they don't have a possibility. You can create, this is where people are getting innovative, creative, in really diving into what they believe is possible without having outside influences shift the way they believe that they can show up in the world. There's an awesome book that I've gathered some of this information from and expanded my own thoughts, Necessary Endings with Dr. Henry Cloud. And I just want to... Um, really stress that necessary endings are meant to happen when you're on the stepping stones to great things. And we must pay attention to the reality. The reality that things must come to an end to move forward into something better. And it doesn't mean necessarily that you've failed or that you've quit. You've decided to put your attention onto moving forward and where you can show up as your best self. And it's time to create something new. So when you think about whether it be in your workplace where you feel like you have no control, I want you to make those two lists. What is it can, that you can control? Do you have an opportunity to get education, put yourself on committees to get some experience, join volunteer boards to really show up authentically and be in the flow of who you are. So take that control back because you can control you. You can move forward as being the best you ever, but it all starts with paying attention to where you put your focus, where you put your energy, and are you giving away that control because you need validation, approval, or a sense of significance from someone else. It's an inside job. Tap into it and you will soar amongst everything else. Pull on those strengths, look for those opportunities, aspire to be your best self, and watch those results happen. Thank you for joining me. Please go over to my website at www.debrakazowski.com where you can get your free video course download of Making Habits Stick, and you can put that focus and consistency into your work, your life, and get the results that you desire. And subscribe to this video series and you will be in tune with as many videos that come out with these nuggets that will help you live a better life, lead better, as well as launch your business into new heights. Have a great day, everyone.